Audrey. And I'm Katie. Welcome to the Meeple Society. Today we are on episode 24, the mm -hmm. second part of the E's. The last the two E's. And the final, that's right. This one was quick. This one was. We only had 30 some odd E's. Mm -hmm. So, but before we get started, please give us a like, subscribe, maybe hit the bell icon if you want notification of future content. And follow us on all of our social media. There'll be a link in the comments so you know how to do that. All right, let's get started. So, to get started in the last section of the E's, we first got to go back because, yeah. unfortunately, we bought two C games recently. We did. Not expensive games. It's the, it, and the bad thing is it's going to get worse as we go on because there's going to be more letters we can buy games out of. Yes, and we have Dice Tire West coming up that we're going to be driving to. So You know, we have rest stops and rest stops. Yeah. we got to stop at game stores. And, and then Gen Con in August. <sighs> so, yeah. Let's get started with, we're going back to the seas, and the first game we got is Can't Catch Harry. I found this at Goodwill. Okay, I was going to say, where did we get this from? Brand new, <coughs> looks completely unplayed, and to be honest, I'll show you what got me. I, I had never heard of this game, I've never heard of the IP, but what caught my attention, besides the fact it was brand new, was these silly little playing pieces. I loved these. So I thought, well, what the heck, right? It's, it looks like a fun party game. So we played this with my brother and his wife, with Joe and Tony, a couple weeks ago, and we laughed. Oh my gosh, we laughed. This sucker is so simple. Everybody starts with four cards in their hand. The goal of the game is to get a matching set of four cards. When you have four cards, then you lay them out, Show everybody you have four, and then it's a mad grab for one of these adorable playing pieces in the center of the table. You're a sucker for cute little things. I am a sucker for cute little things. Thus, we've been pieces. married for so long. <laughs> I am not going to touch that. <laughs> anyway, the rules say the youngest player is always the start player. Mm -hmm. I had read some stuff that said that was very overpowering because there are wild cards that come up in here that of course are never going to get passed on that's not a wild card that's not a wild card but yes there are wild there it is nope that's nope. that's baby james where's the wild cards i know there's some in here there okay. we go there's wild cards and if they get pulled of course you're not going to pass those on so somebody recommended that rather than it being the, first, the youngest player all the time we just pass the first the start player Mm -hmm. So we did that, and it worked out really well. Uh, so you play to a total of 11, an exact total of 11. No higher, no lower. So the, how the game is played, you have a stack of cards. Everybody has four in their hands. The start player is drawing a card and looking at it and then passing one card out of the now five in their hand to the next player who looks at their hand, passes one to and so on and so forth, the last player takes one out of his hand and discards it. And this is how you go through the deck until somebody has a full matching set of four. At that point, again, the person with the four lays it down and everybody makes a mad dash for one of the pieces. The pieces are all different numbers on the bottom. So if you grab this adorable little guy, he's worth one point. This guy, and you're not gonna be able to see him because the number is super tiny, but he's worth two points. Um, if you grab Harry, he's worth three points, and the lantern, which is always out, <clears throat> is worth a negative one. So sometimes it's advantageous to grab that lantern. Because you, you're going to score points for the card yes, you have. Yes, you score yeah. three or four points if you have a set of four. Mm -hmm. If you have lanterns in your hand, it's negative points. And then there's a devil card, and that does something else. I think it resets everybody to zero if, if you, you manage yeah, to man get all four. Uh, all four, but yeah. it's negative points if they're in your hand. Right. It's negative points if they're just in your hand if you mm -hmm. have one to three. <clears throat> so it's a risk. But if you can get all four and end on those four, everybody resets to zero, which Tony Happened, did to us yes. at one point. Yeah. So, which because actually Tony worked in my favor. Evil. <laughs> well, it worked in my favor because Joe was about to win, and I ended up winning the game. So. But adorable game. I, I did not expect to enjoy this one, but I did. I think in the right setting, it is a lot of fun. 
So we're going to keep this one in the travel collection. I think it makes for a great fun party game with just a lot of laughter. Mm -hmm. And what more do you want out of a party game, right? <clears throat> so anyway, that is Can't, Can't Catch Harry. So the next one of the, uh, the other C game. We, <laughs> <clears throat> we had some extra time before we had to show up at the Quapple and Nerds residence to play some no. games. And we went by Half Price Books. And found cable, cable car. This looked. This is, I would say, almost Carcassonne meets Sarah, but not really Carcassonne. I mean, Carcassonne is though you're laying square tiles down. But it is it's definitely like Sarah. Suro advanced. <clears throat> yes. Oh my gosh, Suro advanced. Because you're trying to get things to go off the board. Yes. But yes. to score points, not just to get them out of the game. So this one comes, the idea with this guy, if you can see here on the back, is you are building a railway network in early the, the early days of San Francisco. You are building the cable car network. So everybody starts with so many pieces around the board, depending on player count. And depending on the way you're playing. And that's true, because there is an advanced variant where all the colors are used, and you are not any specific color Buying you stocks. are buying stocks in specific colors on how well they're doing. So, well, you're not even buying them. You, you started them. out you start out with a certain number and one yeah. of your turns is you can trade in stock to try and get a different color. Mm -hmm. And then you score points at the end of the game based on the stock colors you have, how much stock you have of each color. Mm -hmm. um, and you can only ever have four. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to be very careful as to which four you get. But anyway... So how this one is played is the board, I mean, the board is pretty blasé. It's pretty gray. So it's pretty beige. Pretty beige. I'm say. sorry. Not gray, beige. So that's pretty beige. But how the game is played is you've got your cars set up in all these little numbered sections. The tiles, very similar to, again, Sura, Sura. <laughs> all have these rail patterns on them, two on each side just like Suro, mm -hmm. and you are trying to connect these patterns to get them from point A to point B. I don't know. It was a lot more interesting than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. So, And I like yeah, tile laying games, and so I thought <laughs> it was worth a shot for the 10 bucks we paid for it. But uh, I really like this one. And we like Suro anyway. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun, but this one definitely ramped up that mechanism yeah. for me. So anyway, this is uh, this is definitely going to stay. This was actually designed by the guy who did um, Alhambra. Yes, Dirk Hen. Yeah, by Dirk Heim. Heim? Hen. 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 Dirk Hen. But anyway, that is Cable Car. It will stay in our collection. Actually, mm -hmm. we never really talked about it, but I think it's going to stay. We mm -hmm. both really enjoyed it. Now we have to find a home for it. Okay. Okay. On to the now ease. we'll start the ease. final countdown of the C. Ease. The E's. C's. That was the C's. That's the final of the C's. God. For now. Uh, so let's start the E's and we will start it off with Ryan Lockett's, one of his early games of mm -hmm. Eight Minute Empire. Yep. This one we have had in the collection for quite a while really and we've played time. it twice now. Yes, we have played it a whole two times. One of our friends came over and played this with us and the main mm -hmm. reason we have it is because it is a three to three to eight, three to five, or two. To, oh, it says two to five. Yes. It does not play well at two though. No, it doesn't, because you can keep away does. from each other. This is a whole area control it kind is. of game. It is. It's an area and control. area control games don't really work well with two players, I don't They think. don't, and we're not big on area control mm -hmm. games mm -hmm. anyway. But the board on this guy it's is, really and it's tiny. not really an eight-minute game. It says an eight-minute game, but it's not an eight-minute game. It's more like 20. The boards on these, you have four choices, but this is how big they are. They're just little teeny things. So it goes that way. During this game, everybody starts out with some presence on whatever the start area is. And then you're kind of spreading out with from there based on cards card play. Taken. You are drafting cards over a certain number of rounds and you are... You get, you get a resource yes. and an action that you get to take. The resources up here count toward... We don't really get them. They count toward end game scoring. Mm -hmm. You get this is end game scoring and you want it. It's set collecting in that aspect. But you're doing the actions down here at the bottom, either putting new two new cubes on some territory that you 
um, control or this one is you can move two cubes from one area over the C area so you can go over the blue dots. Um, there's, no, that's put three cubes out. Move five cubes anywhere, anywhere over land. You can't go over C on that one. Move four. This one you can actually make a town. There are, if you can see them, these little discs in here that those represent your towns. So you can put a town out and that means that you control that area. Mm -hmm. That's one of the ways you can control an area. So all the different cards have different actions. You're only using so many per game, so you'll never see all of these. And the, yeah, um, the top of the card, like you said, is yeah. the resource you have. And the middle of the card is the how victory. many points the, yeah. this card, well, multiples of this card will score you. Yes. Because like if you have Three of three this carrots. One. You're gonna score three points. No, nope, you score oh, one point. One point. I'm sorry. If you you have to have because it's a very common yeah. thing. If you have eight carrots in your hand or in your tableau, then you score, score five, five points at the end of the game. So um, this was. I mean, it was enjoyable, but ultimately, I think we decided we're gonna sell this one mm -hmm. because we've had this for probably seven or eight years, and we've literally played it twice. It mm -hmm. just doesn't come off the shelf for us, but it is an enjoyable game. So, well, I, like I said, we, we're not big we're on not, area control yeah. games. We're so. not big on area control, and this one I don't feel, even though it says two players, does not play well at two players. I, but anyway, 8-Minute Empire, it is unfortunately hitting the sale pile. Next, we'll get a big one out of the way here. Okay. This Something I can put on the bottom. is Easy Money. I feel like that was heavy. It Oh, it does have some heft to it. Yeah. Easy money. Okay. I don't I... know why there's so much weight in this thing. Because of all the money. Because <laughs> of all the paper in it. Yeah. And it's all on one side. Yeah. Okay, so this is one I fully expected to hit the sale pile. Because it is about as cheesy as it gets. But one of our friends, Ben, sat down and played this with us one night, very late one night. And we laughed our way through the entire thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe it had to do with the hour. I don't know. We were all tired. But we laughed through the entire thing. So the premise on this one, it is basically a, a gambling game. For all intents and purposes, that's what you're doing. This board is enormous. Well, not really. I guess it's about the normal size board now that I look at it. Everybody is using one player piece to move... Let me turn this over. To move around the board. You roll two dice, you move that many spaces, and you do the area you landed on. And it affects everybody, not mm -hmm. just you. So there are different areas on here. There are the lottery spaces. You roll the three colored dice, and, and everybody lottery has tickets. lottery tickets. And you look through your lottery tickets to see if your lottery ticket happens to have those three numbers in that combination and if that yep. happens then you get all the money that's been piled you up here multiple, in the middle multiple numbers on your lottery tickets, yes lots so. of them so the money on this guy i feel sorry for whoever had to do this when they first got yeah, it we i bought it used so we did not have to do this but you have to wrap up all these little wads of money in yeah, money bands around, yeah, yeah it, it's crazy yeah, so like that, it has the little sticker around it and everything, and that's that's five hundred thousand so dollars. Lots of different spaces, um, some good, some bad. It was just a lot of fun. We, like I said, we laughed our way through the entire thing. This one is going to stay in the travel collection. Um, it's just good fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because so. I think if we get them to pull that off the shelf, they're going to have fun playing yeah. it. And the box is super bright and colorful. So we'll see it, it's an odd shape. Well, for back yeah. when it came out, it, that was your common shape of the right. game. So. so, but anyway, easy money. It is going to stay in the travel collection. Next, we have another dice rolling game in Even Stevens Odd. You covered <laughs> up Steven. That's because of the way the rules sit. I, there was no way, because I laminated the rules because I had to print them out. And yes, yeah, so you can't see Steven. So there's Steven. Steven sits in the middle of the table. This is another one of those um, Real get the roll done roll. and grab for the grab for the grab for Steven. So with this one, everybody has their playing board. Everybody gets a set of dice, three of their own color and three white ones. 
And then at the start of each round, you have a goal. You have whatever your task is for that round. So like all the white dice have to be odd, all the colored dice are even, and everybody's just rolling madly until they can make that work. Mm -hmm. And then once they get all their dice assigned, they grab for Steven and the round ends, and then everybody checks their boards to see, did he really actually do that? So there's that one. There's five dice are odd, one dice is even. Stripe straight. Ooh, that'd be hard. So it's every other. Every you gotta other go from dice. one to six, and every other dice has to like the colored yeah. one has to be one, the white one needs to be two. So colored so dice so odd, white dice even in a row, and mm -hmm. all five numbers, six numbers. So all fours. So it's. It was again good fun. Mm -hmm. It was we laughed all the way through it, and I think that's the kind of games I really want to have in that collection. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, not all those types of games, but a good chunk of those types of games. Games that kids can grab off the shelf and just laugh when they're playing. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. But that is Even Stevens Odd. With little Stephen. And uh, it will stay in the travel collection. I might have to cover Stephen back up there because the rules are too big. Next, right. we have are one of two crane ring rail games and that is empire express this is the baby version of empire express no this is empire express empire builders so with this one you are building routes on a board so the board that is not how that board goes yes it is actually how that board goes together mm -hmm. so anyway this is half the board yeah, this is basically the northeastern part of the United yes. States is all it is. Yeah, mid Midwest and Northeastern. Yeah, Empire Builders is the whole the entire US. Yeah. country of the US. Yeah. All right, so with this guy, you <coughs> have got, you're basically building routes to make deliveries. So everybody starts with, I think, three route cards. Mm -hmm. And the this has two options on it. Every card has two options that you can do. You can only have to do one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you don't you can only have do to do any of them, but you can only do one of them. So it shows you where you need to pick up the materials mm -hmm. and then where you need to drop them off. So you need to build your routes not only to drop off something, but you have to get it first. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> the routes, basically your materials are just these little discs that go onto your train card. Your train, it's not super fancy because there's your train. If you can see that. There you go. There's your train. For what it is, I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's an older game, but I still really enjoy this one. Yes, it is a lot of fun. We yeah. have another train rail game we of have another Iron, train rail. Iron Dragon. We'll be playing later, yeah. The, when we get to the uh, eyes, which is yeah, a lot bigger. It comes with, I mean, it comes with a lot yeah. of cards. There are a ton of route yeah. cards in here. And there's some, there's not just the route cards. There's other things in here, too. That happen. That, like, here's a, they're called um, breaking news. Like a derailment. Every, each train within three mile posts of Concord, Fort Wayne, Knoxville, or Richmond lose a turn and must discard one load that they're carrying. So things like this happen. So if you draw new cards when you fulfill a route, you always have to have three route cards in your hand. And if you draw a breaking news card, then this <coughs> happens. It goes off immediately. And then, you draw another. and then you just draw another card to replace it. So I don't know. Like I said, it's. I like this one. I wouldn't mind trying Empire Builders. Yeah. We've never played it, but no. that I would not mind to, trying it. It's a lot bigger, and they said that one of the big differences, other than there, this one only has a quarter of the map, is that in Empire Builders you can upgrade your trains and make them go faster. Oh, I have heard that. Yeah, they'll get more movement yeah, on it because you only have twelve. On this one, you only have twelve movement. Yeah. You can spend up to because okay. So each of these gives you money, and you start with a certain amount of money. To build your rails, to go from milepost to milepost is, quote, $1 million. To go into a town is $3 million, unless you're going into one of the big cities, and then it's five. To go over rivers costs you an extra million. Then, of course, going through the mountains costs you extra money, because it's much harder to mm -hmm. build railroads in the mountains than it is over flat land. Yep. So... You, you're having to spend the money you get to build your rails. You can only build 20 million per turn, and then you can move 12 spots. So you're having to balance how much money do you have. Mind you, the winning condition is money. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to spend all your money. Uh, but anyway, that is 
Empire Express, great game. It will stay in our collection. Next, we're going to talk about a big epic game, and that is called Eclipse. Oh, no, not this Eclipse. This <laughs> Eclipse. So why don't you talk about this one first? Okay. I wondered where you were going with that. All right, so... Got to keep them guessing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is one of the, the... What is it called? Gigabit? Gig, Gigabit Games? Mm-hmm. I, I know that's not how that's pronounced, but there's a whole series of them, and we do, we, I think we have four of them. This particular one, everybody, well, there, it's a two-player game, and most of theirs are, I think, are just two-player games. There's your board. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a set of these. That's the, the, plan, the big one. I put, that's the first two I pull out of that. So everybody has a set of these balls on chains, and some of the chains are longer than others, and... So you're on your turn, you are moving your, these things around the board, basically trying to trap the other player. And you're trying to trap their, what do they call this? It's, I think it's not the planet, it's, but anyway, you're trying to, to trap this one. You're moving your pieces around as, as far as the chain will let you go until you can get their piece trapped. You can put your chain over somebody else's if you can, like I'm here, well, actually, I couldn't do it with that one. I'd have to go, it'd have to be this guy. You can do something like that. So now my guy is trapped and I can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So you can trap other people's playing pieces so they can't harm you later. This is one, I can see the finesse of it. Neither of us really enjoy it though. Mm -hmm. We've taken it to a couple of events. It has never come off the shelf. At this point, I think we're going to sell this one. Mm -hmm. And just neither of us enjoy it. I don't know. I can, like I said, I can see the the it's attraction very, to it. If you really like abstract, abstract. This is games. very, this very, is very yes. abstract. This is definitely an abstract, but. Uh, oh. And you like abstracts. And you I like do, them, so. and I don't particularly care for this one. So this one is going to hit the sale pile. All of its, the others we have in the collection, unfortunately, will not show up until the queues. We'll talk about them in a couple years, mm -hmm. the rate we're going. But, uh, so unfortunately, this guy is going to hit the sale pile, though. But that is Eclipse. So now, this is Eclipse New Dawn of the Galaxy. This was the first edition of it. Yes. This has a new edition, the second, second Dawn, Dawn of the, yes. the Galaxy. The only really big difference so far that I know, I haven't played the second edition, is the components are a little bit better. The ships are a little cooler. Yeah. Well, we have the upgraded ships in this one. We mm -hmm. bought the expansion that had the upgraded ships, so they're not yeah. all exactly the same. The and new they edition are actually neat. can go on stands, and they can actually be up yeah. in the air. So. That's all right. This one does not. That's <clears throat> okay. Just more pieces. Yep. Anyway, so this guy, he is a 4X game. It's probably actually one of the only 4X games we own. Yeah. Um, 4X, if you are not familiar with means what was it explore expand expand exploit exterminate exterminate yes so with this game it is it is a tile lane game you are exploring the galaxy you are everybody starts with a home world and there's a center base with aliens on it guarding the treasure so, and everybody is trying to explore the area around them and as you are exploring you are picking up other tiles and laying them down. You have to identify where you're going to go first and match up the wormholes, but you are putting out new tiles. And then if that tile has an alien on it, guarding some treasure, then now you got to fight that alien to take control of that system. Otherwise you can choose to go ahead and expand mm -hmm. and take that system right away. You have colony ships you can use yep. that you can place out cubes onto those planets to get better resources or better, more money or more science. Science, yes. There are some systems that just simply give you a treasure. And those treasures uh, you can either keep for the two victory points at the end of the game or you can flip the treasure over and actually take what the what's treasure on the other is. Side. Yeah. And it can be almost anything. I mean, it even can. you can even find ships out there yes. that have been abandoned and you take find them over and you ships. suddenly have a yeah. ship on that area. You do. Um, it could give you more resources, <clears throat> more, resources. more money, yep. more... Uh, Upgrades for your ships. Yeah. yeah, I think Connor had one last night for... Yeah. We played this last night yeah, with Connor and Ben. Hull. Gave him a three-hole ship. His ships were hard to beat. 
Mine was, mine was no Your, easy task. That's true. Yours were pretty bad by the end of the game, too. So anyway, with this game, you have a player board. This is your player board. My one complaint in this game, when we first got it, was the fact that it's, it's, it's not dual layered. <clears throat> that these cubes in this area yeah, is all filled with cubes, and this area is all filled with discs. My one complaint was the fact that these all just, there was no way to keep them in place. So we played it once. And then immediately I said, yeah, I'm not playing this again until I figure out how to solve this problem. So I got on Etsy. I love Etsy. And found these. It only covers the bottom half of your board. But that's okay if you can kind of sort of see that. Maybe. There you go. Maybe. Anyway, it's just a little clear acrylic piece that all your cubes and all your discs fit into. And it keeps everything all nice and lined up. So even if your board gets shifted, mm -hmm. and it does, everything stays in place. So love these love Etsy. So each round you are doing a number of different actions. Um, the more actions you do, the more money you have to have to pay for those at the end of the round. Otherwise your galaxy, your, your mm -hmm. empire goes bankrupt and you are effectively out of the game. So yeah, it's a way to kick yourself collapses. out of the game. Yeah. So, but you are doing actions by pulling discs off down here. Um, at the end of every round, any action you've done up here, those discs come back and you get to reuse them the next round. But any discs that you put out onto Your the planets. now planet, the board, to claim systems, those discs don't come back unless mm. you do special actions to get them back. Yeah, you gotta do you the, can do the uh, influence action influence to pull action. them back. Yep. Um, but you can research new technologies and you fill in technologies up here. And there's a whole other board that... Yeah, there's a whole other board full of technologies. all the new technologies, technologies come out that you got And pay only some science. come out every round based on yeah, player count. Four-player so you... game, you get seven new ones. You start with 16. Yeah. And then every round, you get seven more of right. those out. But some you may never see. Yeah. Like last night, we saw there's one technology I kept trying to pick up last round uh, that gave me access to build the monoliths. And it only came out once. And Connor snagged it, and, and he won the game by a landslide because he built a slew Way of monoliths. Way to go, Connor. I know, right? <laughs> so anyway, so there's that. You can upgrade your ships. These are your ships up here. These are the blueprints to your ships. The nice thing is you upgrade your ship. It applies to all your ships on the board. So if you of upgrade that of that type, yes, sorry. But uh, so that's upgrade. Building is to literally just put your ships out. And then there mm -hmm. is the move, and that is physically moving your ships on the board to other sectors. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because each each of these sheets has an alien race and then a, a Terran side. race, which yeah. is the human side. Yeah. Um, I would love to show you some of the ships, but they are buried on the bottom of this box. I'm not going to dig them out, mm. but I have lots of pictures from last night's game, so we'll show them right here. Very fun game. I've heard this described, and I would have to agree, having played both games, I would totally have to agree. This is the junior version or the baby brother to Twilight Imperium. Which we do have also, and we will get to when we get to the tease, if not earlier. So anyway, that is Eclipse, <laughs> New Dawn for the Empire, for the Galaxy, New Dawn for the Galaxy. And this will stay in our collection. Despite it is definitely geared toward extermination and battling and area control, mm -hmm. it is one we both really enjoy. So, um, yep. so yeah, and we'll who knows, on maybe this. one day we'll have the second edition. Maybe. There's hope. She actually says maybe now. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, that is Eclipse. So it's break time and we're going to play Eat It. <laughs> Lots of dust on this guy. Snacks, sweets, trivia. Oh, Snacks and sweets apart. trivia game. Yes, this guy, it, it's a trivia game. It is, for all intents, for, it is a trivia game. But it is a trivia game all about... Snacks. Junk food. Yeah. So there's your board. You are moving around the board very much like Trivial Pursuit. Mm -hmm. Trying to get answer questions. The triangles here are basically your pie pieces. Um, and then once you've got all five, is it five or six? It's six. One, two, it three. It is five. It is five. Once you have all five pie pieces, which are actually cards five pieces of your pyramid then you go into the center and you have to answer one of each one before you get to the top and then you have to answer one of the your opponent's choosing essentially i mean it was fun i i, I will say that we started off pretty you started off fairly strong i 
started off frustrated. You started I, off frustrated. I would get just real weird. You were getting um, some pretty weird ones that I was getting. Yeah, and about then it food. turned and then it turned around and you won. Yes. Or whatever. Yeah. So and she like, was mad about that. This is one that caught us both by surprise. And I mm. guessed it, but I had never even heard of this. So what is the main color of a bag of cooler ranch Doritos? Cooler, cooler? not cool ranch. Cooler. So we both thought it was a typo. And you posted about it, and somebody came back with a picture of a bag of cooler ranch. Well, potatoes. Tony, our sister in law. Yeah. Came it's like, back what the say. heck? I mean, I guess blue because that's what color cool ranch is. But yeah, that was really funny. Yeah. So, and then I had, we had another one set aside. What, oh, <laughs> what's the name of a snack with the slogan, it's meat horrific? Yeah. If you don't tell them, yeah. So if, if, if you know, put it in the comments. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the explanation down below that is hysterical though meat horrific Greg couldn't come up with this one it made sense to me but no it did not <laughs> it, I had never <laughs> ever heard of this slogan I had never heard of the slogan I know the more popular slogan for this brand but never heard of it this way Th I'll, that's just a horrible slogan I'll put the answer in the comments so anyway no oh. Don't put it in the comments. We'll put it on the next episode. Oh, geez. We got to remember to do that, though. We'll write a note. Okay. See, that gets them to come back. Okay. Right? You'll come back. Please come back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that is Eat It. All right. So we did have a good time with this one in the end. Um, I feel like it is very easy trivia questions. More or less. I mean, it's things that... I don't feel like it's dated material. Although some of it is. A lot of it is much older stuff. But mm -hmm. it was still interesting to go, Like, really? terrific. <laughs> Tell you what. If you comment below what you think the answer is, we'll message you and let you know if you're correct or not. Oh Maybe we'll even give you the game. <laughs> if you want it. So anyway, I think we decided this one was hit in the sale pile, mostly because it's a trivia game, and trivia games just don't come off the. That's what I say. The first the person shelf. who guesses it right could have the game. <laughs> okay. Anyway. It's still a fun game. It was fun, um, and for a trivia game, which we do not enjoy trivia games, we did enjoy this one because some of the questions were like seriously, so. But it is going to hit the sale pile again because it's a trivia game and they just don't come off the shelves. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, we've got to narrow that room down some before we move it. Anyway, yes. That is Eat It. Okay. Next on our list is an empty box of escape room, which means they must have escaped already. <laughs> Tell us, Katie, why is this box empty? Oh my goodness. Okay. So anyway, we had a number of escape rooms that I found. Every one of them I found at Goodwill. This one, actually, when we found, all of it was still sealed. Everything. Mm -hmm. I have taken all of our escape room games and kind of done this with it. Uh, I've put everything into these envelopes where all the pieces are here. The, <clears throat> the secret hints are here. The... All the pieces inside of these that can be laminated have been laminated to protect them so that they can be used multiple times and not destroyed. So I've done that with all of them. They all sit in this giant black box that sits on the shelf. Um, at the bottom of this box is a container that holds a couple of the decoder, decoder stations as well as boxes with all the keys in it and the... Now, the, the keys red. are not specific to games, no, or are they, they all the same? No, they're all exactly the same. I've compared all three okay. sets I have. They are all exactly the same. We played Secret Agent when we did this for this video. And I'll tell you now, we lost. We we did not figure it out. We had, yeah, because at the beginning of the game, the it was so confusing. Well, the game. We had no was, idea where we were going. That was partially our, our fault. We did not, we did, thought we knew what we were doing. We've played escape room games before. What mm -hmm. the heck? We knew what we were doing. We did not even look at the rule book. Well, in the rule book, it tells you 
that there are certain parts to the game that has an ER, this little bitty symbol, ER. Well, that tells you, you have to go to the side of the decoder box. There are different decoder pieces all over this box. And to solve whatever it is that has to do with this, you have to look at this. And we didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to figure out what this meant in conjunction with this piece. In conjunction, we knew it meant to something to do with this, but we couldn't figure it out. And it wasn't until we went to the... The, the, the actual rule the answer book. the answer book the answer book well no actually we went to the rule book first mm -hmm. and I saw that and I'm like okay it all clicked got it so we figured out what these meant and we kept going um but yeah there were a couple times we had to actually refer to the answer to figure out what have we done wrong yeah because even the, to win the game we had to go Go to the we didn't we win. Figure it out. Yeah, we didn't. Because we, we got did along that. pretty far all the way to the end to where it says, "Okay, now time to solve it." And we, we were right there. Yeah, we were there. We were we there. We just enough. couldn't figure out. We the couldn't figure out the point. last little bit. So now that being said, don't take that to mean that this is a super hard game. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. Um, these are all very well thought out and very well done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just don't think you and I are good at these kind of games. I know I'm not. This is a game that's better with more than just two players. I so think you got so more too. than two brains trying to look at things. You've got multiple people trying to yeah. solve different parts of and it. And somebody needs to be good at puzzles. Mm -hmm. I'm not good at these kind of puzzles. I mean, I was able to figure out a lot of them. I, I did figure out quite a few. The the word clues I can usually figure out. Yeah. The word games and the puzzles. Anyway, great system. We now have three of these boxes. And let's see. I don't think I took the batteries out of this guy yet. I did not. Can you see how it's all lit up? And then if you start counting, it starts making... So, yeah. So, you've got 60 minutes yeah. to solve the case. Yeah. And if you put in a wrong code, it subtracts time. It subtracts time, or it tells you, oh, yep, that's the right code. It'll give you a, a confirmation. You can move on to the next to the next envelope now. But you can't stop it. You can't pause it. Nope. Which I guess is, you know, kind of the point. But. Yep. So, I enjoy the games, but I enjoy them at a higher player count where yeah. I can bounce ideas off of people. So, we'll see. But anyway, yeah, that is the Escape Room games. Um, these will stay in the travel collection because, like I said, I have it all set up for such. But uh, i got to take the batteries out of this guy, though. I don't want them stored with batteries in them. But, uh, yeah, this will stay. The next game we have on our list is a, rather, it is a kid's game. It is. From Amigo Games, and this is Engine Engine Number 9. <laughs> this was actually a lot of fun. Yeah, I got it. It's a train game. It was actually a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, so with this one, you are, well, number the one. The components are great. The components are fabulous. The components are these adorable trains. Everybody starts Their engines, trains with three engines. Fun. I'm sorry. Everybody starts with three little engines like so. And your the goal is to get all your engines from the start point into your depot by mm -hmm. traversing the mm -hmm. entire track. Here's the pitch, though. So each round, you are rolling three dice. Two normal six-siders and one color dice. The color dice Refer tells you... The moving tracks. Which of these tracks are going to get shifted. And notice there's only three of them. On the board... And this poor board was ripped when I got it, but we fixed it. To a point. This is your board. So these pieces sit into these little holes here, if I can do this, sit in these holes. And when you roll, they get shifted like well, so. Well, they go to the open slot. They go to the open slot, whichever slot is open, but you can't just, oh, well, I want to turn it this way and put it here. You can't do that. They have to slide. You can't yeah. pick them up off the table. Right. So they slide back and forth into whatever slot is open. So, and notice the tracks on these are 
change curving changing. they're they're making you change there's dead ends and if if you go to an area where there's no track or dead ends you have to take that train and start that start engine all over. and start all over again yep so it was a lot of fun um, and again, the gold bean you got to get from the start to the to the end, and then your train goes into the depot. First player to get all three trains into their depot wins the game. We both had to start over half a dozen times mm -hmm. with different trains. It was fun. It mm -hmm. is going to stay in the collection. It is. Uh, it's one of the kids' games yeah. this day. Yes, absolutely. It is one of those that I think is a little more challenging than your normal mass market kids' mm -hmm. games, and therefore I want to keep it so. That is engine engine number nine. Okay. Next we have a, it's actually a prototype. Mm -hmm. This was sent to us to, to check out for a Kickstarter. Unfortunately, did not. It did not fund. Fund. Yeah. This is called Escape from a Dying Planet. Yeah. We did a playthrough of this one mm -hmm. um, for Brainwave Games last year sometime. It is just, it's just a little card game. You play 10 rounds. Each round is identified by an event card. Um, and that's not what they're called. They're called something else in the little book. That? I don't remember the cards. Event cards? They're event not card. event. It's something different. But anyway, essentially that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So you're playing 10 rounds. Everybody has a hand, an identical hand. The only difference on the hand is, is the picture in the middle. The picture in the middle. So. So everybody has an identical hand of cards with a number up here in the corner. And this is all the number. That's the only reason for the card is the number. There's no other identifying marks on it um, or useful pieces of it. In the middle of the table, you have one event card with a matching number. Mm -hmm. And you also have treasures set out based on the number of players. You have a couple treasures set out, which again, with points on it. These are actually victory points at the end of the game. So... What you're doing, you start off the game with your eight cards and two danger cards. Danger cards, which... Um, which are actually called something else in the rule book. And I've seen it referred to two other names besides danger. And that's, mm -hmm. to me, that was confusing. But it's all right. It, it, it gets the point across. Mm -hmm. So you start off with two of these. The only point of these is to clog your hand up. That's just like any deck building game. You've always got that card that does you no good that clogs your mm -hmm. hand up. This is them. So... During the game, you have five cards in your hand. Five cards in your hand. Two, well, in a four-player game, two treasure cards sent out, one event card. You are picking the cards from your hand, and the goal is you have to meet or exceed this number on the event card. Uncover the number. So you are basically bidding cards from your hand to two different piles. One to meet or exceed this, so that hopefully you don't get the bad effects from it. And then one to bid on the treasure cards that are sitting there. And they range from one to four points, I think. That one to sense. five points, something like that. But a lot of the treasure cards also have special abilities on the bottom that you have one-time special mm -hmm. abilities. As do this. As do these. A lot of them, not all of them. Not all, no. But, so you're bidding cards. If you do not bid enough, enough cards to meet this number, then you get more contamination. Contamination, that's what they're called. Or you get more contamination cards, cards or danger cards into your hand. Again, all these do is clog your hand. So you want to try to avoid that, but at the same time, if you keep going after this, you're not going to win the game because you won't get any points from this, and this mm -hmm. is all that matters at the end of the game. So and there's different ones. There's ones that only give you one. There's ones that give you four. Mm -hmm. Try to avoid those. Yeah. But... Then there's special abilities at the bottom. Like this guy says it counts as a treasure of value three. Well, that's kind of nice. That's worth going after. This one, um, play before the commit phase. Look at a target player's hand. Okay. So you can see what somebody else is doing. Mm -hmm. Remove one fatigue from your hand. Um, so different things in here. And so, yeah, that's the problem. I have seen these called contamination, fatigue, and danger in three different spots in the game. So, so like we said, this was a prototype. It was a prototype. So, so there were still there were still some role adjustments. Yes. And, the, and we've seen a lot of the adjustments when it actually went out on the We Kickstarter. did. And we played it one way. We played it based on the rules we had on the, the video. Last night, a couple nights ago, we played it based on the new rule set that I found on Kickstarter. And I have to admit it was better. Yes. 
in the original game, you did not lose points for having fatigue cards. In the updated version, you do. Um, so you have to watch how many you're getting. After a certain point, it doesn't matter. You're not losing more than four points. It's a, it's a decent game. And the kids, the kids, listen to me, Justin and Jackie. They're in their 30s. Um, they're both in their 30s, yeah. <clears throat> but they did have a good time with it, and we did too. It was fun. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to hold on to it only because we can't get it replaced. And it is, it was a gift from Brainwave Games for basically doing the demo for them. But that is Escape from a Dying Planet. But if you're interested yep. in that, if it sounds good, if you see the video, Reach Brainwave Games does have a website. You can always go to the website and inquire about purchasing yeah. a copy. Okay, next we have another... Well, this isn't a train game. This is an nope, airplane, airplane game, game, and it's a route-making game. It, yes. But a little different. Yes. Because this is Expedite. Yes, this was another Goodwill find mm -hmm. quite some time ago, actually. Quite some time ago. With this guy, the board is basically, whoops, if I can get it open, Europe. If I it's correctly. the world. Oh, it is the whole world. Okay. Yep, you're right. It is the world. I forgot. But anyway, yeah, this is a basically a board of the entire world with different airports listed on it. And as you see, each airport has different colors, different numbers. So you are playing the game. Everybody has their two little planes. One plane is down here on the scoreboard. The other plane sits on whatever their home airport is. And that is their home airport for the entire game. They can't lose it. Um, and you choose those at the end, beginning of the game. It's not set in stone. You, you look at your cards and you choose which one you want. Mm -hmm. So throughout this game, and this is where it has a very strong ticket to ride feel. Um, because you are claiming airports with train with airplane cards so in order to for instance to go in here to caracas you have to have two red cards and then you can put one of your chips on caracas or you to go into where is this Casa, casablanca you have to have one blue card or cairo oh, okay. three red cards or rio de janeiro three red cards that's yellow three yellow cards <laughs> Once you have an entire route and you have route cards from point A to point B again. So like, for instance, this guy goes from Winnipeg to, I would pick up one I can't pronounce. Djibouti? Djibouti? I think it's Djibouti. Sure. So you're going, <laughs> you're going from Winnipeg to wherever Djibouti is. Where's Djibouti? It's a blue right one. Yes. To Djibouti. So you have to be able to trace a route from Winnipeg all the way to Djibouti and hopefully you have claimed all those airports. If you do, then you get the number of points on the card. Done. 17 points. That's, that's good. First player to 100 wins the game. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have them all, so say I had, you have to have the start and finish. So I have to have Winnipeg. I have to have Djibouti. I have to have control of those. But say, okay, so here's New York, and then I'm going to go into London, and then down into Rome, and then over to Cairo, and then into Djibouti. Well, maybe I don't own Rome. So this, you see this little two here between London and Rome? I have to pay from my points, the two points to whoever owns Rome. Mm -hmm. So if Greg owned Rome, I would get 15 points now, and he would get two points, because I had to use his airport to get there. There are ways to take over airports from other players, but it costs. So say Greg owned Rome. Well, Rome is one, took one yellow card to take. Well, now I have to pay two yellow cards to take it. If he wants to take it back from me, he has to pay four yellow cards. To get it back, I have to pay eight yellow cards. So it gets keeps getting more and more expensive as the, as the time goes on. So airports are constantly changing hands, mm -hmm. and you just kind of stack the the. The, uh, your okay. chips on there so you know how much it's now going to cost. But, which, on uh, Rome's not that bad, but you get down to some of these expensive ones. Rio would cost you six to take it over. And then mm -hmm. nine, and then twelve. I, it was a fun game. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it's a basic route building game, but it is, it is basic. Mm -hmm. Oops, I think I folded this wrong. That is not the way this folds. So, I think we decided this one's going to hit the sale pile. Mm-hmm. We've had it for probably close to five or six years now. This is literally mm -hmm. the second time we've played it. And I just don't see it coming off the shelf. Yeah, we have in plenty of route building games. Yeah. As we'll see when we to, get to the tees. Yeah. So, yeah, 
that is expedite and it will hit the sale pile next we have elysium which is a I don't know, a card drafting game with powers yes and basically it ends up being points you're drafting cards for points but you're also drafting for powers to be able to do certain things during the game yes so everybody starts with their board their elysium their elysium thank you and you are you choose from the start of the game you choose five families to play um of all the different gods mm -hmm. And they give you a base setup and they give you some suggestions or you can just do it random. And that's how we did it. Um, we just played randomly. But each of the families has a different Color. focus. And yeah. Yeah, different colors. It's a different, different focus. one of the yeah. Greek gods. So the end goal is, of course, points. And you are getting points. So you're picking up these cards. You're drafting these cards using your colored pillars. You can only draft cards of the pillars you still have in front of you. Um, and you get, you're basically drafting four, four, three cards and one, one of these per round. Um, this basically gives you your end round bonuses. Um, how many cards you can move down into your epoch, which I'll explain how many coins you get, how many, um, victory points you get. So you have to draft one of those each round. And then you also have to draft three cards. If you can't draft a card, then you can flip the card over and take a citizen. You could pull a citizen mm -hmm. off the top of the deck. Citizens typically are negative points at the end of the game, but they they, they help can, you do yeah, your... they help you get your your families put together. Right. So you're what you're trying to do at the end is each round at the end of every epoch, you are moving cards that you just you have drafted that you're using the powers of because you can use the powers on the cards so long as they sit. It's not the Elysium, it's, what is the top half called? You've got your tableau of cards, whatever that's called um, in here. I remember mm -hmm. it has a specific term they use. But you're moving those cards down into the Elysium. Once they're down into your Elysium, which is below your board, because you've got cards above and below your board. Once you move them below your board, uh, then you can no longer use their powers. You set them into a family and they're there till the end of the game. Your families are done one of one of two ways. You can either do a full set of one, two, three. See how all these have different numbers on them? So a full family would be a set of one, two, three of the same color. Or you can have a family of all threes, one of each color, each of the five in the game. Mm -hmm. And then you score points based on what you have in each family. And some cards give you end game scoring that, hey, if you get an extra point for every every different color card in this family. Well, you definitely want that card to be in a family of threes or twos or ones. So you've got to decide as you're going, when is a good time to give up the special ability of that card, that power. Some powers are only one time use. Get them out of there. Some cards you use repeatedly. You might want to try and hold on to them for a little while. However, there are also cards in there that allow you to take cards out of other people's tableaus. So if somebody, if those cards are in the game, you may not want to leave that, that red three you need really badly. You may not want to leave it up top because somebody's going to steal it, Adil. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> anyway, um, fun game. We've gotten to play this now at two player and three mm -hmm. player. I really enjoy this one. Um, so yeah, this one will stay in our collection. Okay. Um, so above the tile is your domain. domain. Below your tile you. is Elysium. Okay, I could not remember domain. Yeah, I couldn't so. either, so I couldn't blame her. Yeah. All right. So anyway, that is Elysium. This will stay in our collection. Okay, the next one is... It Dagger... With the box lid on the wrong way. Okay. Hint Decker. Why do you look at me like that? <sighs> Nothing, dear. Anyway. So, Ant Decker is... See, because I'm going to take the lid right back off again. Ant Decker is, again, kind of a route building. Mm -hmm. Sort of. Only it's on the ocean. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, you are... And this board is enormous. There's half of it. Everybody uses the same piece. This is an old Mayfair game. Um, we got this, again, very early on in our collection. 
but you everybody's using the same pieces thank you hold on i have to go get the boat it set sail it did all the way across the room anyway so everybody's using the same boat piece this time i'm going to try not to throw it across the room and you are deciding where you're starting on the board you are laying tiles you are choosing there are six face down piles of tiles sitting off the side and you are grabbing a tile from one of those six and laying it out the catch is is kind of like carcassonne all your sides have to match up land has to match land sea routes have to match sea routes if you can't do that from the position you're in on one of your four sides or three sides really then you can't lay the tile you have to toss it aside your turns over at the beginning of your turn you are paying money to say this is how many tiles i'm taking one two three whatever and you, pay that. And you have to pay it in advance before you get your tiles and then you draw your tiles great i can use that one place it out move the boat to that tile then you lay out the next one crap i can't use that one it doesn't match up discard it turns over doesn't matter how much you paid turns over no refunds dude no refunds yes so there is that now you could pay more because these these tiles are one a piece or you can pay for specific tiles that have very specific routes on them and there's five six different ones seven, seven different ones because there's one that's all land also mm -hmm. no six because the, six, seven, the, the sevens, sevens are the, are starter, the tiles. starter tiles so there's six different options where you've got all c or c on three sides land on one two and two you know whatever mm -hmm. they're all the different options are there you could pay four coins to get a for sure tile to lay down so you could do that too that's a definitely a viable strategy so as you're going, you're building islands, you are claiming islands um, with one of your playing pieces. You're paying money to put down either scouts, settlements, or, or forts. Fortresses. And then when an island finishes, whoever has the strongest piece there, being the fort or settlement typically, gets all the points. then you get points from it. Anybody else who has stuff there gets half, quarter, eighth of it, whatever, uh, depending on how many players you mm -hmm. have. In these blue tiles, there are also question mark tiles. These are event tiles. There's one of four there. Some good, some bad. Some of them could give you a gold mine and you get three extra coins. That's important because coins are hard to come by. And, well, sometimes. There are pirate ships that steal half your money. There is... Storms that end your turn. There are storms that end your turn. No matter how much money you've paid, you pull one of these guys, your turn is over. And Again, huts. no refund. And then there's huts. The huts sit at the end of the board down here with this trail, and and the, they start, all the huts start on the board. When you place out your settlers, if you find a hut, you get to place out a free settler, free scout. The scouts, the first person to place on each of the huts gets to pull a produce token from the bag, valued anywhere from five to 10 points, five to 15, 15 points, points, and hide it in the hut. So you know what it is, but nobody else does. So, and then as islands close, the forts and settlements go back to the person who got them, who put them there so they can mm -hmm. put them out again. And all of the scouts go down here. Whoever has the most scout presence at the end wins the points that are in that hut. Mm -hmm. So it's just another way to make points. Um, again, area control type thing. All right, so thoughts on this game. We talked uh, briefly about it. We know it is one we will never find again because of how old it is. It's out of print. And it is it's out a of Mayfair print. game. It is a Mayfair game. I think we decided to hold on to this for now. Yeah. And we'll see. It is an enjoyable game. We'll see how much more it comes off the collection. Yeah. And by, maybe by the time we get to the Z's, we'll have an actual answer. <laughs> and we'll see if we've played it since then. Right. Because well, that would be two, three years down the road by the time we get to the Z's yeah. with all the T's and the S's and the R's and everything else we have. Well, and we are starting to go back. We're realizing that we were very lenient early on. And we're keeping things probably more than we should have. And mm -hmm. we're starting to go back and go, eh, this one really needs to go yeah. on the sale pile. Well, then pile. Maybe, maybe put it on the sale pile. If it sells, it sells. If it doesn't. We'll hold on to we'll it. On it's to definitely it. not one I'm going to throw to Goodwill. No. Um, I'm afraid it would be destroyed if I did. Nope. 
but yeah, I mean, I could try to sell it and see what happens. And this is a Klaus Tober. It is. It is a Tuber, Klaus Tober. Ta- ta- I can't never remember. Tuber? Tu- I don't know. Toiber? Toiber. Toiber. Klaus Toiber. Katan thing. Yeah. So, so, yeah. We don't know what we're doing with it yet. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. have an answer by the time we get done with all these games. Right. Next, we have Endeavor, our demo copy. And the newer version. Endeavor. Endeavor. And there's actually yes. a newer newer version coming soon. What? Yes. It's a more modern Endeavor. It's not this time period. Okay. Anyway, we got this one as a demo copy from a game store when we first, first started doing the uh, game nights with the choir department at the high school. Um, and it has stayed in that collection ever since. It, mm-hmm. uh, very popular, older, uh, Euro game. However, we fell in love with this game and wanted our own copy when, so when it came out on Kickstarter, and of course, getting a copy of this is next to impossible now. So when the Kickstarter came out for this one, we immediately backed it. So this one I'll put away. It is going to stay in the travel collection. Mm-hmm. This guy... This is all about the Age of Sail and exploring out of Europe into the rest of the world. Essentially what it is. So this guy comes with some really nice components. They did a really good job with the reproduction of this guy. Everybody's pieces are all nicely housed in in game trays. The the trays to make set up easy with the, the buildings. So if I had one complaint about this entire game and the production of the game was the dual layered player boards and the mm-hmm. player boards and they're buried underneath everything just to keep them flat. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to yeah, pull them the out. Very, very the, the under board is essentially just a piece of heavy card stock and they warp really bad. Mm-hmm. So we've discovered that if we lay the box flat, we put them on the bottom upside down and everything else on top of them. When we pull them out of the box to play, they are at least flat when we start. Yeah, but by the time we get in, they, they don't start stay flat. Back up again, so. Yeah, so they're on the bottom. So we're going to leave them there. And it's not just our copy. I've heard a everybody lot of had the same about problem. That. Yes. So this game plays in seven rounds. Um, you start off with one building type, and the rounds are tracked because at the start of every round, everybody picks a building type that they're capable of building mm-hmm. from the tray. And there's multiple different building types in here, so you can flip them over and do different setups for each game. So you've got a little bit of variability there. This one also came with a number of modules that change up gameplay a lot. So in any given round, you are doing actions. You get so many workers to start with, and the workers are your little colored discs here that sit on your player board. But you get so many workers per round based on what your culture has built up to. On your player board, you are tracking your industry. That allow that tells you how much building you can do. And on these cards, on the buildings, you have industry of one, two, three, four, or five. And you can build based on where your industry is, tells you wh- how far back you can go on buildings. And the buildings give you different abilities mm-hmm. throughout the game. That's essentially where you're getting your actions from, is from the buildings. So that's your industry um, that allows you to build. Your culture gives you your workers. How high Mm -hmm. your culture is determines how many workers you're getting out of your supply every round, how many Mm -hmm. new workers are coming to your area. Uh, Then there is your wealth. Your wealth determines how many of your workers you can pay so they'll come back to work the next day. Yep. Then there's your influence. Influence is essentially how many cards you can hold in your hand, how many cards you can hold on your board. Mm -hmm. Um, Cards give you, again, more abilities, uh, more uh, more of your resources. So anyway, so the game starts, everybody starts in Europe, and each round you are doing a number of actions based on what your buildings allow you to do. You could sail and do a shipping action. A sailing allows you to go into these areas here or some of these ships into open areas. But as you're doing so, each of these round areas are filled with discs that help you increase your different resources, your industry, your culture, your wealth, your your influence, or maybe give you bonus actions later on. Mm -hmm. So you're going into here. 
Um, once an area is completely open or in Europe, because Europe is where you start, then you can colonize and colonize is to go into one of these little look they look like little forts to me all over the yes they do the world um so they're they're intended to be different cities in different countries but the time period that's about they were yeah they're, they're that's true. The they cities. were all walled cities yeah, that's very true so colonize you go into these different areas and again take the disc off to get more resources but that shows influence in an area it shows mm -hmm. um presence in an area you gain, you can pick up cards. These these square areas here are all different cards for the different regions, which again, give you more bonuses. Um, but you can only pick up cards valued at how much presence you have in an area. Yeah, and you can only take a card if you have enough uh, influence, influence to hold on the your cards. board. So however yeah. high your influence is, is telling you yes. how many cards, cards you, you are take. allowed to take, yes. The game plays out in much of that matter. You're you're colonizing, you're you're sailing, you're uh, whatnot. There are different modules in here. This is one of those games that it feels like you're never going to get there, mm -hmm. and then at the end suddenly you're there. Yeah, because you start off with very few workers. You yeah. barely have anything in the first round, and yeah. you're and halfway through. It's like when I'm barely done anything, and then those last By couple rounds couple just rounds, things open yeah. up and you're doing stuff. And the pieces to this are phenomenal. Um, if you and the one complaint we've heard about this, and this is probably why they're reprinting a more modern mm -hmm. Yeah, I think is that is the, the actual slavery. purpose, the slavery cards. But, you know, and all the times we've played this, I don't think either of us have ever gone the slavery route, ever. No, not in this one. I think in this once one, maybe or twice, once. maybe in the original but man, version. But, you are but... penalized for taking the, the yeah. slavery route mm -hmm. at the end of the game. Yes, you are penalized you lose for a it. lot of points for it. It is part of the game, and I think that is why the new, more modern version of this is coming out, because mm -hmm. I think they addressed that, and I mean, I've not seen a lot about it yet, but I think that is one of the main reasons they're coming out with oh, the I new one, because they're addressing the fact that these two had the slave cards had in it, and I think they've it. taken that out of the game. Yeah, that is Endeavor Age of Sail, and of course, the original Endeavor. Endeavor. Um, the big difference being this doesn't have all the modules and a little big difference. This could be played at two. This one needed a special yes, rule. That was the big difference we found in this one. And yeah, one reason this is we a three to five. It. This is a three to five. There was a fan made two player version, two of player it. variant, variant made, yeah. where you played a dummy character and every round somebody's putting out discs for that dummy character. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. This one actually takes and makes it, it's a two-sided board. Yeah, yeah. So it takes the board and makes it much more tighter for two to three players. So you have a two to three player side and a four to five player side. And that really changes up the game. Mm -hmm. And it makes it so much nicer than having to play with a two-player variant. Mm -hmm. So very much enjoy this one. So anyway, Endeavor. <laughs> I can figure out how to stack this. There we go. All right. Next we have an abstract game of... Exigo. Exigo. Ex Exigo. Yeah. Ex Exigo. I don't know. Anyway, we've played this a couple times. I found this at Goodwill again years ago. It caught my attention because of the shiny clear acrylic pieces. I don't know what it is about clear acrylic, but... You're distracted by shiny I things. I am distracted by shiny things, yes. She is like an ogre. <laughs> but look at these pieces. These are beautiful. All right, so with this one, your board slides together like so to hold it together, which is nice because that helps it reduce the size of the box, which I do appreciate. If I can get the board together, I'll, I'll show it, it to you. Side. Anyway, yeah. Now, she came now I can't get apart. Right. <laughs> anyway, so the board sits, it does slide together nicely. So your board sits like so, and everybody is taking their player pieces. The goal is you're getting, you have to get four in a row. Simple, right? Except you only have six. You don't have an unlim mm -hmm. unlimited number of pieces. You have six pieces to play with. And you're putting your pieces in and trying to get your four in a row. Meanwhile, other people are blocking you and trying to get their four in a row. As you're playing these pieces, and I hear I've got three already of mine. As you're playing these pieces out and somebody decides to move one of their pieces. So say here, I'm totally blocked. I'm just... That didn't work well. I'm going to pick mine up and move them. I've got, I'm going to move it up here now. And kick everybody else and off the board. kick everybody else off the board. So these two pieces that are now separated from the group 
have to be pulled back and given back to their player. Mm -hmm. So now he has to play those. If you have pieces in front of you, you have to play from in front of you. You can't move something on the board. But if all six of your pieces are on the board, you have to pick up a piece and move it someplace else. So it's a constant ebb and flow on the board. Mm -hmm. We played it two player. It, yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't much. It wasn't much, yeah. We played it four player with two other people who really get into this kind yeah, of game. Your brother and, and his wife, Joe and Tony. Wow, what a difference. Mm -hmm. It was really intriguing. So we're going to hold on to this one because I think it is a great abstract game. And we'll see. And I think, like I said, it's the pieces. You can't lose. Those, these are beautiful pieces. I can't open the bag up to get them back in there. Because you're distracted by shiny things. Because I'm distracted by shiny things. I love these pieces. So anyway, I really did enjoy this game. It was a lot of fun. Uh, very. It was a very quiet, intense game, if you know what I mean. Because everybody was thinking very hard. And it got... And it did. Just like any other type of game of this nature it excuse you box okay just like any other type of game of this nature you're going to end up where well you got to block that person because i'm not going to um so you did end up with a lot of that but eventually it gets to the point where crap there's not enough people left before that person to block that person and that's how the game ended is there wasn't enough people to block joe so but yeah, neat abstract game, shiny pieces, how can you lose, right? So this one will stay in the travel collection, but that is Exigo. Next is a library game. Ex this is Ex Libris, where you're building, you're basically building you shelves are. of your library. This one again is another one of those that doesn't really have much of a board. That's your score and sheet. This is essentially the board and it just simply houses the module, the yeah, different it, it houses things. what scores. At the so end it of tells you all your scoring options. There are six cards that identify the six different types of books that are in the library. Mm -hmm. um, and you have like you have your monster manuals and your spell books and your historical tomes and um, gosh, I can't remember all of them now. But anyway, you're taking one of those cards and that card is now considered. Oh, here it is, right there. Corrupted, corrupted codices, fantas, fan fantastical fictions, uh, historic volumes, monster manuals, reference book texts, and spells and potions are the six types of books in the library. So, and each of the cards depict at least one, sometimes as many as four of those. So you're taking one of the set cards. Each player gets one. Mm -hmm. So you each, every player has their special type of book they want to, to focus get, yeah, on. Because they get extra get, points. Yeah, for you get extra points for it. And then one of them goes up here in prominent works. Those are the books that everybody gets extra points on. So you want to try and collect those. And then there is the banned books. Those are the books you don't want a lot of in your library because you're going to lose points on them. But you have to have some because there's one here that shows variety. You have to have you get points based on your lowest variety of books. Mm -hmm. So you wanna to try to have some because you're gonna get points on them, but you're also gonna lose points. So anyway, that's your board. Each round you are putting out action boards, location boards, um, equal to the number of players. At the end of each round, one of these becomes a permanent action. And then that action is available for the rest of the game. And then you pull out more based on, again, the player count. So each round, you're getting one more permanent number added to this board. So based on the lowest number out for that round. So it's always going to vary mm -hmm. each game. You're never going to have the same permanent actions each nope. game. And some of these are, are, are different. Like this one here. Well, let's see here. Here's the wishing well. Discard X number of cards and then draw back up X plus one. Um, you may immediately shelve one of those cards. So how this game plays is you are collecting these cards out of the deck or off of these player boards, off of these mm -hmm. action boards. Each of the cards have letters and numbers up on top. The letters, of course, A through Z, the numbers tell you how many shelving units appear in that letter. Mm -hmm. Like this S card says seven of 10. So I know there's 10 shelving units in this area. 
this is basically important when it comes time for end game scoring because your shelves all have to be in alphabetical order. So and numerical S order. and numerical order. So S seven of ten has to come sometime after S one of ten or S three of ten. If S one of ten is placed after seven of ten, then one of, I lose one of those sets of books at the end of the game. I can choose which set I lose, but I lose one of those sets of books. You're building your shelves. The game ends when one player has sixteen or more shelving units mm -hmm. on their player board on their their tableau. Um, and then you go through and you you make sure everything's in alphabetical order and then you count points and whoever has the most wins. You get four actions per turn to do something on the action boards or on your player board. Your player board has actions as well that allow you to either pick up no, new cards or shelve cards. When you gain new cards, you're not immediately shelving them. You've got a whole hand of cards and you can choose which ones you want to shelve because it's a special action on your player board. But... Everybody starts with three player pieces, and then there's all sorts. Each of these boards have special player pieces. So, like this guy has the bookworm. He performs both home actions and may discard one card to repeat both home actions. Your home actions is to gain cards or shelve cards. Mm -hmm. Shelving cards is how you win the game. You want to get those 16 down before everybody else does. So, mm -hmm. very interesting game. Um I really like it. The artwork is absolutely adorable. The names of these books are hysterical. Rules for writing rule books. Parasites in you. Parasites in you. Interesting names to these books. So anyway, very cute game. Uh, really enjoyed this one. This one will stay in our collection. Oop, that goes down one first. Uh, so yeah, this one sits in our collection and will stay there. That mm -hmm. is, whoop, whoop, okay. this guy likes to add an ex libris. Okay, next we have Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. I feel like that just... This is only this, we've played this twice now. Yes. The first time was just me and you. The yeah. second time was me, you, and Ben. So this board is enormous. I'm not going to open the whole thing because it is enormous. But... The basics of it is you've got these three paths going through the Caribbean from point A to point B on each one of the paths. They all start different. You have ships for each path for each path that are moving along. All three paths end at Trinidad. That is your ultimate goal is to get to Trinidad and then be the first to Trinidad to be the first to Trinidad. And you get points for being the first to get there. Um, but everybody has their ships. Everybody has their pirates. Now, the game comes with just wooden meeple pirates. Mm -hmm. We found an upgrade on one of our travels where we actually have little pirate figurines. So, we use those now. But you can't even see it. Nope, can't see it on there. But <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, so the board is filled with... And I know you're not going to be able to see this. These little dots on all of the location here. There's different locations that have little dots on them. And those dots are cubes. They mm -hmm. are cubes from the bag that are put out. And these are what you're trying to gather. And they're actually little crates. They're the little crate cubes. They're adorable. But you're trying to gather these up because your goal is to get crates from these ships, the passing ships that you're raiding, because, I mean, you're, you're pirates, after all. You're stealing. And you're trying to get to locations where you can off. thus turn those crates in for points. You turn them in for a treasure. For treasure. And there's all these treasure cards at some point are out during the game. So you're, you're trading in for these and trying to get the first one to, there to do it. But you're playing your cards out. It's kind of a deck building. Because at each ship and at each location, you can draw cards off of a stack to pick up more pirates to put on your crew. So, let me get, put that away for a second. So, and the cards basically give you movement points. They give you um, special abilities, some possibly most of these. Yeah, like this says move four on the black track. Uh, but you have to move on that specific track or you can use him for his movement points and just move two on any other track. Mm -hmm. So you're playing out your cards to move or do the special abilities on them. Um, again, building up your, your decks as you go 
based on ships that you're rating or locations that you're going to. So anyway, that is Extraordinary Adventures Pirates, and it will stay in our collection. I'm going to assume it was handed to me this way. I don't know. I'll let you do it. That was my second guess. <laughs> you only had two guesses. <laughs> okay. Okay, finally, a very obscure game. Yes. I've only seen this in maybe one other place. We bought it used. It's this is Essen. We bought it off of the clearance shelf. Actually, it was not used. We bought it off of the clearance, the clearance shelf for five bucks at Saltiers. Yeah. Years ago. Uh -huh. um, and I only got grabbed it because of the name. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, it's about the Essence Spiel Game Fair. That sounds fun. And it in theory, sat, it is. Yeah, it sat on the shelves. We broke it, it out as a two-player game. We and did, tried, yeah. stopped about halfway through because it just wasn't making we a lot of sense to us. We could not make heads or tails out of it. So last week, was it? Last week. We went week, over to Coopla Nerds, Coopla Nerds mm -hmm. Doug and Mary. We broke it out and learned it. And it was, it was more interesting. Yeah. <sighs> There's a little bit more to do because there was four people. It's definitely not a game to play for two players. No, even though it says it is. I think it mm -hmm. actually, it can be played two to eight, actually. Yes. But you, for eight players, eight you player need tokens. another game. Yep. Um, it says two to four. Okay, so in this one, the basis is you are running a booth at You're a game distributor. Essence Spiel. You're a game distributor at Essence Spiel, and you are trying to attract customers to your booth to purchase your games. Basically, you get money based on the sales tables that you have active, and you have to choose how many sales tables you're going to have versus how many demo tables you're going to have. Demo tables convert to more customers next round. Sales tables convert to money. Mm -hmm. And you're doing all this on the on knowing how many customers are going to be coming right. through you the doors. Right. You know how many customers are coming through the doors. What mm -hmm. you don't know is how many of them are going to be willing to buy. How mm -hmm. many tables should you have set up? So you're guessing at how many tables. So you may know there are 30 customers coming through the door that are going to be distributed among everybody. Mm -hmm. But what you don't know is that only one table from every booth is going to sell. So if you have three tables, sales tables set up to sell... Which you have to pay for every You round. have to pay for to set those tables up because you've got to pay your employees to work them. Mm. Then you're going to lose some, some. So, for instance, your sales table, that one sales table, whoever is assigned to that table is going to convert to money. Mm -hmm. No problem. But the next table that you set up for sales and they didn't want to buy after all, those people just leave. Mm -hmm. Same with that third table. They just leave. That fourth table that you set up for demo, and that's all they were there for is for demo, then great. Those people will stick around till next round and potentially buy. So you had some information, but you didn't have perfect information. Mm -hmm. I wanted to like this game. Yeah. I really did. Because it was mm -hmm. such a unique thing. And there, there was more to it. Cause there was more to the it, The more yeah. actions you could do, because you could put out sales, sale ads. Yeah, which you, you could. Whether the stock, the, the game stock basically yeah, crashed. Yeah, because there was a lot of stock. You're still going to get paid yeah. for games. Or you could get a, an accountant to cook your books so you could move your money around on the bottom of your board. Yep. To gain, you played in eight to rounds. win goals. Yep. Get, to gain certain goals. Because the money... Of the games that you sold, turn into money, and they sit in in stacks for, for each part of the day. Part of the, of the day, day, yes. And yes. that's the money you're using to put out more tables or run ads or what have you. Yeah. I don't know. Ultimately, I think we decided this one's hitting the sale pile. Yeah, because although it, it was kind of unique in the way it plays, like I said, but, I wanted to like it. Yeah. And I did like certain parts of it. Yeah. There were other areas I really did not. Yeah, um, and I it and it overstayed come. its welcome. Yes, it did. It really by the by the time we probably hit the fifth or sixth round, it was more or less okay. Now we're doing this. Now we're doing this. Now we're doing. It was very monot uh, monotonous. Is that the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Anyway, uh, very samey. So this guy is going to hit the sale pile. I'm afraid. Mm hmm. So, but that's Essen. And that is it. That's it for these. That is it for these. Yay.
So, um, look for the for for the next letter. Yeah, the F's, next we'll start the the F's and which will have my number one game of all time in which I'm excited to play. Yep. But you so you'll have to watch because we're not going to tell you whether it's the next one or the one after that or the one after that. <laughs> you'll have to watch and find out. So until then, we'll see you at the next letter. <laughs>